Let's pray. Spirit of the living God. It is this time gone that we want to center in on what you have to say to us because the word of God is more than literature. The word of God is life. It helps us. It guides us. It keeps us. It protects us. It develops us. It corrects us. It quickens us. And we thank you for the word of God. For God, it even became flesh and dwelt among us. And John saying, we beheld his glory, only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Thank you for allowing us to be here in your presence. We come to entertain an audience of one. And we ask you, Holy Ghost, to take control in this place. Touch this space, touch the virtual space now. Sweep through. Touch somebody's heart to let them know that what they're about to hear can change their life forever because of the word of God. We thank you for your son, Jesus who you sent into the world not to condemn the world, but through him the world might be saved. And God, I believe that today that somebody's going to give their life to you. Somebody's going to return from a dismal place, God, into a place of destiny with you as their Lord. And Father, I give you praise right now that you have full control over this service. Do what you want to do. And Father, I thank you, Lord, I ask you to give me the mind of the wise and the tongue of the learned. When you say stop, I'll quit. When you say you'll not slow down and everything is for your glory. In Jesus' name, all God's people said amen. amen. Hallelujah. Hold up the word of God and just repeat after me and just, because we like to confess over the word of God here at Power Nation. And just say, I believe absolutely everything that this book says about my life, my family, my future, my finances, my feelings, and my faith. In Jesus' name, amen. Uh, today, y'all, is, is uh, going to be a good day. Uh, it's going to be an amazing day. And um, I, I want to share with you, um, I believe, a principle that's going to make our lives more streamlined in purpose and also to help mitigate disappointment and distress. Um, but you have to be open to it. Um, I don't want you to live by the mantra this day that you can't teach an old dog new tricks. I learned if you feed him enough, he'll do something different. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Tell your neighbor, say, neighbor, neighbor. I, come I come for change. And I don't want you to hinder it. Right. What I mean is, I, I got to have a praise partner on my road. I got to have somebody that's going to talk back to me. I got to have an amen partner. Yeah. You, you know, I don't want to turn around and see your head nodding. I want to turn around and high five somebody that's, yeah. that's, that's ready for change. Ask your neighbor, say, are you ready? Matter of fact, practice right now. Say, so give me a high five. Give me a high five. Yeah, 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 yeah. There you go. There you go. There you go. Now, if they ain't high five now, I, I, you have permission to change your seat. Hallelujah. You got permission to change your seat because I don't want you in a dead corner. Hallelujah to God. So listen, uh, I got two passages of scripture that I want to read from today. They're both parked in Matthew. Matthew 16, verses 21 through 23. And then I'm going to go to Matthew 26, verses 47 through 50. And, and hopefully that uh, I can weave together this particular tapestry of text yeah. so that it will cover you in the warmth of God, that you will never feel the chill of darkness and sin ever again. Um, I have to choose these two because I, I want to make sure that it makes sense. And I want you to, to open up your ears to hear what the Spirit of God is speaking to you now. Uh, um, let me read this. Matthew 16, 21, from the New Century Version, it says, from that time on, Jesus began telling his followers that he must go to Jerusalem, 
where the Jewish elders, the leading priests, and the teachers of the law would make him suffer many things. He told them he must be killed and then be raised from the dead on the third day. Peter took Jesus aside and told him not to talk like that. Because it sounds like Jesus ain't got no faith talking like that. <laughs> he said, God save you from those things, Lord. Those things will never happen to you. Then Jesus said to Peter, listen to this. Then Jesus said to Peter, go away from me, Satan. Wait a minute. Oh, you are not helping me. Listen to this. You don't care about the things of God, but only about things people think are important. Wait a minute. Can I stop before I go to the... When people don't care about the things of God, they become a potential enemy. Matthew 26 says, verse 47, he called Peter <laughs> Satan. Woo. While, while Jesus was still speaking, Judas, everybody say Judas. Everybody say Judas. Ooh, say it again, Judas. One more time, ooh, Judas. Nobody wants to talk about Judas. Ooh, you know them hyenas on Lion King? Mufasa, ooh. I don't want to talk about Judas. Mm -hmm. Judas, one of the 12 apostles, came up. With him were many people carrying swords and clubs who had been sent from the leading priests and the Jewish elders of the people because he already cut a deal. Uh -huh. Judas had planned to give them a signal saying, the man I kiss is Jesus. Arrest him. At once, Judas went to Jesus and said, Greetings, teacher or rabbi, and kissed him. I, boy, Jesus is hardcore right here. Jesus answered, Friend, do what you came to do. Then the people came and grabbed Jesus and arrested him. The word of God for the people of God. You may be seated. I, I, I looked at this and it appeared that Matthew got the roles mixed up. When you think about it, it looks as if Peter should be the friend and Judas should be the enemy. Because we've known, you don't even have to go to church to hear about Judas. We, we know that Judas was the one that betrayed Jesus. Betrayal. Such an ugly thing to experience. But let me tell you something. An enemy cannot betray you. Only a friend. So in order for Judas to become the betrayer, he must then first be Jesus' friend. Come on, Bishop. But then Peter, who seems to be doing something good, when Jesus tells him, listen, they're going to kill me. And this must be done. But then Peter, the, uh, the King James said, Peter rebuked Jesus. Why are you talking like that? Uh, this, 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 this is not going to happen to you. And then Jesus said, get thee 
behind me, Satan. I'm trying to figure out why is Peter Satan and Judas a friend? Have you ever been around people that you have met or just kind of gotten to know but something didn't quite sit right with you about that person, show of hands. Uh, and then, you know, you, you didn't dismiss them. You, you didn't get rid of them. You, you, just, you just, like the Bible said, you, you eyed them from that day. Yeah, um, uh, in other words, what we say, I, I'm, I'm, I'm watching you because there's, watch this, can I go churchy for you a second? Because there's something in my spirit that just don't sit quite right about them. So when they come around, I'm, I'm, I'm watching them. I'm, I'm, I'm looking at how their body language is. I, I'm looking at, at how they, like my grandma said, how they cut their eyes. You know, you know, that's old folks there. You know, what you cutting your eyes at me for? I, I'm, I'm looking at the language and the verbiage that they're using. I, I'm just looking at how, how you celebrate when I win and, 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 or if you celebrate when I lose. I, I'm watching you. you know, I'm, I'm paying attention because, you know, mama ain't raised no fool now. I, uh, you know, you know, fool me once, it's on, it's, it, you know, it's on you, but fool me twice, it's on. Now, I'm not, no, mama ain't raised no fool you know because you know I got grandmama spirit. I got the gift of discernment and I just feel these people now I'm not saying people do have the gift of discernment yes yeah, some but 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 everybody who say they have it do, do not have it uh, 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 just just won't put that out there at you okay uh, yeah, yeah. And so, you know, you, you spend time and every time they come around, your whole mood changes you you shift your, your attitude because they're in the room and you got to and you got to make sure you got to make sure that you keep them in their place because there's something in your what spirit they just don't sit right with them so you watching to make sure they don't, they don't sow any seeds of discord and, and so they don't try to tear down what you're trying to build and they don't try to woo your friends away from you to get them on their side and next thing you know they don't form the coup against you and so when they come into your presence you, you are eyeing them and watching how they cut their eyes because you feel in your spirit that there's something quite off with them. So today, because y'all said y'all encounter people like that, and some of y'all still might have people like that around you, I would like to speak from this particular subject, if I could please. Stop studying Judas. Bishop, come on here. <sighs> Stop studying Judas. <laughs> Can I help you? Some? Can I start off with relationships real quick? Leave my notes right there. This just helped me. Hit, I mean, hit me. Um, why? <laughs> if you've been in a, re a relationship married for a number of years and you, you, you know this person and and next thing you know, this person comes around and you don't like the way they're looking at your spouse. And, and, and you say, I, I'm watching them. I'm, 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 I'm watching them. And, and so I'm, I'm watching them. Now. I'm watching how they look. Well, really, you must understand is uh, what happens or don't happen is not based on the person you watch it. It's based on the one you've been with. So there's no need to get PO'd with the person who just showed up. Because what transpires is not based on what they just brought. They just got there. What transpired is based on what you already know. Well, watch this. Today, before I go into this, I want you to keep the main thing the main thing. 
Because sometimes we, we, we major on minors and we minor on majors. Power Nation is in a unique position right now because we, 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 we're in a growth track. We're in a growth field. This is our time. Would you look at somebody and say, this is Power Nation's time. Now you need to look at somebody and say, this is Power Nation's time. Uh, and so I, I, God gave me this and I was, I, was, I, was, I was at the gym and I was doing something and the Lord dropped this in my spirit. I said, oh my God. I said, this is so true. The Lord said, he said, T.C., stop studying Judas. Well, uh, how many people went to college and graduated? I said, and graduated. Yeah, no, I didn't say went to college because I went to plenty of colleges. Some of them I didn't even enroll in. <laughs> But I was there. <laughs> I'm an honorary graduate of A&T University. <laughs> I spent a lot of time there in the 90s. <laughs> Never went to a class. <laughs> but I stayed, in the, I stayed in the dorms. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Ate in, ate in the cafeteria, went to the student union. So I, yeah, I went to an HBCU, sure did. <laughs> I visited Bennett College a few times too. Praise the Lord. I, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Glory to God. I also went to a university, went to ECU plenty of times. Amen. So if you went to college, that means you had to study. All right. How many of you studied? Tierra, you better raise your hand. You know, Tierra was valedictorian of her high school class, you know, so she had to study. You know, she built me all these years. I just found this out a couple years ago. She, I didn't even know how smart she was. Yeah. And she'll tell me she don't like to read. I'm like, oh, something ain't right. How, how can you not read and do this? You got to study. Now, don't do like me. Don't do like me. See, because I, 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 I hated to study. I, I hate to read. I hate to read. Now, I love to read more now because it's more be beneficial to my purpose, but then I didn't like to read. I, I, I forget in this. I never forget. I told you all about this in the class. Uh, it was a, we had to read this book and write a book report on the book. And I ain't read that book. And I forget what the book was, but I didn't read that book. I just read the little summary on the back of the book. You know, they write a little summary on the back of the book. Just flip it. It's just a little paragraph about that big. I just read that and, just go, and, my, and my book report might, might have been four sentences. I never forget the teacher, Ms. Wainwright said, did you read this book? I said, absolutely not. <laughs> and she said, I'll give you another chance to read it again. Do you know the first book I read from start to finish in the sixth grade was Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. Chocolate Factory. That's the first book I read. I got it for Christmas. I never forget it. And uh, that's the first book I got, first book I read from start to finish. And uh, it didn't have a lot of pictures in there, but I do remember old Charlie Bucket. Yes. Yeah. Right. And the Golden Ticket. And they live in that little shack. And uh, he, he, and you know, the flying elevator and all that kind of stuff. I remember all that. So, so, so you had to study. You had to study. If you want to pass the test, you got to study. You can't just memorize it. You got you to gotta, you gotta study it. You know, it, it, especially, you know, if you're taking a big test, you know, back in the end it was California Achievement and, of course, the SATs. You know, you, you got you to prep for that. You got you to gotta, you gotta study. Everybody says study. study. You know, if you want to be a real estate agent, you got to study for the state exam. If you, you know, if you want to be a nurse, you got to study to pass those, those tests, those series of tests. That's why I say you have to study. study. You know, and, and so, but if, if you're going to study something uh, or a particular subject or a discipline, it results in knowledge acquisition. So when you study, you acquire knowledge, right? Not only do you acquire knowledge, there's, there's skill development when you study. It, it, it develops more of your, you become more proficient when you study. Now, you wouldn't want me to be your math teacher. You might want Mrs. Simmons to be your math teacher, but not me, because I didn't study math like that. I didn't. I didn't, I didn't think I was going to use algebra in, in, in real life. I, I haven't found a, a squared and an x equals y quite yet. Uh, just, I'm just saying, I, I'm so, but I'm not saying it's not good. If you're in school, then you, you pass the class, okay? You do what you need to do. Don't, 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 don't say, my pastor told me I ain't had to take the test today, Miss Jones. Nope, don't do that. <laughs> yeah, my son came home, told me one time, teacher called me and said, he said he ain't had to do no work. 
because he had a football game that night. <laughs> I said, shucks. <laughs> so you have knowledge acquisition. That means you acquire knowledge. You develop skills begin to be more developed the more you study. And watch this. And you also grow personally. You know, because there are some things, there are some classes you take that you apply to your life. Amen? Amen. And so, and all this happens within that particular field of study. But we have a tendency to be proficient in the problem while exercising incompetence as it relates to the solution. Proficient in problems, but incompetent in solutions. When, when one has a predisposition to disappointment, to failure, and to loss, it becomes so much easier to operate from a state of paranoia. When you've been disappointed over and over again, when you failed over and over again, when you've had loss over and over again, it's so easy to be paranoid. What is paranoia? It's, it's exaggerated distrust. And you're constantly suspicious of everybody. Why are you looking like that for? You ain't speak to me right today. What's going on? Ain't shake my huh? huh? Oh, look. Why they wearing that? Hmm. Why they go that way? They ain't text me right back. Huh. They ain't return my call. Huh. They were short this time on the phone. What's, what's, what's going on? Uh, why they pray about that today? Uh, why they sing that song? Why he take that picture? Huh? What? What? What's the spit? Huh? Uh, Deacon ain't wearing black today, huh? What's going on? What's, what's happening? Huh? 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 He, he, he gave her the communion cup first. Huh? Huh? Why is you sitting up there today? Huh? She ain't sitting next to her husband. Uh-oh. Better watch him. I've been there, done that. Huh? Yeah. Yeah. Suspicious. Paranoid. You know, you know when y'all used to smoke weed, how paranoid you used to be? I'm sorry. Not, not y'all. I'm sorry. I'm just talking about people online. There's nobody here that was. <laughs> if you smoke, we don't raise your hand. Please don't tell her you say It's just, you know. <laughs> you sitting there talking about, you hear that? No! Put that ganja down. But when you suffer disappointment, failure, and loss, you paranoid. Watch this. Everything could be going good for you, but you waiting to see when it's going to fail. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. This is too good to be true. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. Ain't nobody love, ever loved me like this. Uh-uh. I ain't never had a job treat me this good. Uh-uh. I ain't never say this much money. Uh-uh. uh uh-uh. And you paranoid. And you, and you looking for failure. Yes. Waking up every morning looking at the blindness. Failure out there today? Looking in the mirror. Can't no hardly brush your teeth. Is failure coming today? Because you're paranoid. Because you think what happened in the years ago is going to happen again. And so I'm living not life in a state of paranoia. Hmm. Hmm. Judas. Chosen by Jesus. He didn't apply for this. <laughs> Jesus chose him as one of the 12 that would ultimately what? Betray him. Tell somebody, I said, Jesus knew this. Jesus knew this. <laughs> but this is what I, I, I like to say is, Notice that Judas, oh my God, now you better watch out for Judas. You, you, you hear people, I watch out for Judas now because Judas, Judas, go, he, he going to get you. Or, you know, or, 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 or the Judettes, uh, she going to get you. You know, 
You better watch out for them because, you know, you know, because you, I feel in my what? Just something just ain't quite right about them. And if you notice that if you're living in a state of paranoia and you're always concerned about the Judases and the Judettes, notice how your prayer life is. You're always praying defensively. Notice how your worship is. You start to worship defensively in hopes that Judas or Judette does not infiltrate. You get it? Yeah. And so every relationship you go in, if you're paranoid, you build it on defense. Yeah, that's true. And that's why the friends that want to be your friends feel kind of awkward because you really ain't let them in. You, you, <laughs> you shaking hands through a fence. You're shaking hands through a fence. You, you know, I can touch you, but you ain't coming over here. Because I'm already paranoid. Because you, are, you look very similar to what just happened to me. And, and so I, I'm, I can't let you in on this side of the fence. I can talk to you, but you can't come through the gate. Mm-hmm. Yeah, 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 yeah. I can't let you get close to me. You got to stay over there because I'm already paranoid because I feel in my that something might not be right with. And I got to watch you every time you come around. Now, could you imagine if Jesus had to watch Judas everywhere he went? But notice this. Judas was one of the 12 with Jesus. When Jesus healed people. Judas was there. When Jesus spoke to the wind and waves and marked for peace, be still, Judas was there. Wait a minute. When he fed the 5,000 one time and the 4,000 another time, Judas was there. So it's safe to say if Jesus is doing the will of God and performing miracles, then Judas can't stop anything. And if he can't stop anything, then why are we studying Judas so much? If not careful, we can spend an insurmountable amount of time studying Judas that we will miss Jesus. <laughs> you could be sitting in this church right now and you got somebody that you don't feel right in your. And you can't even look at me. Notice you'll know more about what they did in service versus what was preached to you. And you know how you know that's at the top of your mind? Because that's the first thing you say. Did you see how they were looking at that? Well, did Bishop preach? I, he did, but, you know, but it, was just, it, was just, it was just something in mind that just won't quite right today. So, so I, I, was his inter, I, I was his intercessor today. I, I was his intercessor making sure that, 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 that Judas didn't get loose. Judas has never stopped anything. Hallelujah. Ooh, Lord have mercy. Uh, and so I want to talk to somebody who, who's been enrolled in Judas 101 for a long time. You, you're taking all the pop quizzes. You're passing all the tests. You study for the exams exquisitely. You, 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 you at home studying Judas. You, you in the car studying Judas. And you, you at work studying Judas. And you on vacation thinking about Judas. And, and you become proficient in Judas. As a matter of fact, you can become an adjunct professor teaching the course of Judas because you know Judas so well. Because you, you know, because you live in order to study Judas like that, you have to be in a state of paranoia to study someone who you think can make a difference uh, in, an, in an augmented way, but really 
have absolutely no power whatsoever. So for those of you who enrolled in Judas 101, the question then lies, how do I unenroll from the class of Judas? How do I, un how do I stop being paranoid of everybody and everything? Everybody don't want your man. Everybody don't want your man. And paranoia does not come from the outside. Paranoia comes internally. Everybody don't want your wife. There's something off with you that you would think that everybody wants your wife or your husband. Ooh. So how do I unenroll from this class of Judas? Jesus reveals how to, how to be solution-oriented versus problem driven. Uh, anybody ever been the victim of self-sabotage? Can you throw your hand up at me? You, you know, I, 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 I know I'm supposed to, but, but I, I just, you know, I, I, just, I just feel in my, that it's not quite the right time. And it's, it's, it's just, you know, uh, um, and, and, you know, I just don't, I, I just don't want, you, you say you got faith until you have to use it. Uh huh. Uh, some of y'all been renting five years and you should have been an owner five years ago. It don't have nothing to do with the economy. It has something to do with you. And, and because you're paranoid. Uh, uh, the, only, the only difference between mortgage and rent is the spelling of the word. Because you got to pay them every month. Hello? And then you would know the legal ramifications. If I, if I got a mortgage, that means I'm going to own this. If I got rent, I ain't gonna ever own this. And in a lot of cases now that, you know, I don't know about now, but mortgages used to be a whole lot cheaper than rent. But because you studied Judas, you only seen Judas rent. Nobody ever told you that you could own. And even though ownership is right in your lap, but you looking at Judas, trying to keep Judas in check while missing your opportunity. You should have been married three relationships ago, but you looking at Judas. He don't even know who you dating, but you looking at him. You can't even have a, 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 a nice dinner looking at somebody come through the, oh, that, that, mm -hmm, that, oh I thought they were then. You, you, I, yeah, I'm good. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Because you studying Judas. And church can't even grow because you think everybody's going to leave. Uh-oh. 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 Can I help you, church members? I don't want to get too close to them because the last church member I got close to, they just, they just left and didn't even tell me anything. So, so I'm watching everybody in the church because I don't want to be disappointed and, and lose because I feel like a fool. I gave my best to them, but they didn't give it to me. They at least could have texted me and told me that they were going to lead the church. Or what I do is I'll just have a whole bunch of relationships not connected to the church. So I have two relationships. The church relationship, who I shake hands through fences. And then the outside relationship, who we'll go on a cruise together with. Lord. I'll see y'all. Y'all have a good one. Oh, I, I, that, was, that was worth it. Yeah, yeah, because you're paranoid. Because you came off the street in the church thinking that people want people. But the same people on the street have to come to the church. And don't you know that people will lie in here like they will lie out there? And the problem is you came in looking at Judas instead of learning about Jesus. And so when they did what they did out there, you thought it was Jesus, but it was really Judas. Problem is you studied him too much. Whew. 
People are people. In church, outside of church. Only difference is you can cuss them out out there. And in here you just act fake, bless you. And, you st- and, it's, still a, and it's still a firm form of cussing them out. When you're not authentic with me, you just cuss me out. When you can't come and hug me organically, you just offended me. You might as well call me one of them names that you call them out there in the street if you ain't going to be real with me in here. Are y'all with me? There's no different. And then calling somebody a mofo out there and not meaning bless you in here. There's no different. But watch this. Reggie, Emmanuel, Caleb, y'all rehearse. At least you're supposed to. You rehearse. You get what, Was you born playing the bass? No, he wasn't born, was he? he, I, he didn't come, I hope he didn't come out with a bass guitar. If he did, you need to be in a magazine. <laughs> but, but, he, but he was a drummer first, right? He drummed, then he, then he, he, you know, most musicians, they stay in the corner long enough, they end up playing everything. And so he picked up that bass, and, and probably when you first picked up somebody, probably told you, put that thing down. <laughs> I never forget, boy, when I played the saxophone, I picked it out because it was just pretty. In the sixth grade, I never forget it. I came home, put that thing together, and I, I called my grandma on the phone, I laid the phone on the bed, I said, Grandma, hold on a second. Listen to this. I blew the horn in right in the phone, and I heard a holler, Boy, stop! Put that thing down! Because I just bought it. But, but, but the more I rehearsed, I became proficient in it. Watch this. The more you rehearse a, a thing, the more you become proficient in the thing. No wonder people can get on your nerves so fast because that's what you rehearse. People getting on your nerves so fast. God Almighty. No wonder you can't forgive because you, 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 you're proficient in holding on to unforgiveness. And, and, and you look for stuff that you can't forgive. And watch this. The more you rehearse looking for it, the quicker you find it. That's why in everybody you can find something not to forgive because you keep rehearsing it over and over and over again. Now you say, so you look hard enough, you're going to find it. So proficient. But Jesus did not come to rehearse problems. But Jesus came to reveal, everybody says solutions. Solution. <laughs> he said, I didn't come into the world to condemn the world. I came that the world would be saved. Jesus said, I didn't come as a problem. I'm here as a solution. And if you listen to the Pharisees long enough, then you will think that I'm a problem. Because the Pharisees see me as a problem, but my father sent me here as a solution. And if you listen to the wrong people long enough, you will think that you are the problem. But the devil is a lie. I need somebody to tap yourself on the chest and say, I'm a solution. Hallelujah. Yeah. You, didn't, you didn't overcome all that you overcame to still be problematic. You didn't survive what you just to survive, just to say I survived. God got you here for a reason. Whether you're online, whether you're in this room, God has you here to solve something. Say I'm a solution. Ooh. Well, if you're a solution, why you keep studying the problem? The problem going to be the problem. Period. Let me say that again. The problem going to be the problem. Period. 
That's just like going to your refrigerator, wanting some orange juice, and looking in there, and the carton is empty, and closing the door, then walking back to the living room, then going back to the refrigerator, opening the door, then that thing empty, closing it again, going back to the living room, getting up a few minutes later, going to the refrigerator, opening the door, that thing is empty, going back in. We know that there's no juice in the refrigerator. What I need to find out, where's the nearest store? Lord. <laughs> but you know what we do? Watch this. <laughs> if you got a house more than just yourself, you got kids, when all the juice is gone, guess what we do? Who drunk all the juice? <laughs> Who told you to drink it? Was it yours? How is any of that? Once you find out who drunk it, is that going to refill what's in the refrigerator? Why not just say, hey, Caleb, run down there to the line of the food and get some orange juice, please. Because the quicker I request the solution, the quicker the problem is solved. But if I'm going to fuss about the problem, I done spent 15 minutes in a problem when I could have been 15 minutes earlier solution driven. That's why, you know, the membership services, thank God for you. See, we do give exit interviews from time to time. But, you know, why they leave, what they leave for, who they were mad at, they gone. Why are we going to spend an hour investigating something that somebody has already decided to do? And once we find out, they ain't coming back. So let the dead bury the dead. Are y'all with me? Is it? We see more conversations. Watch this. I, man, look at this. It blew my mind. I see more conversations that Jesus had with Peter than he did with Judas. Sister Kim, you mean tell me he ain't talk with the enemy? He won't even watch him, Judas. Matter of fact, hey, Judas, um, I need you to go down there to uh, the Centurion and put, put that money in the bank. Uh, go down there to Wells Fargo and tell him we need a, this amount of money. Judas was the treasurer. That lets us know that how much Jesus was paying attention to him. Not much at all. <laughs> Won't he pay no attention to it? Let me tell you something. The less energy you give enemies and problems, the quicker the solution will arise. Yes. <laughs> Hello? I'm up every day, 6.50. Almost. I'm at the gym by 7.25. A m months ago, I was in them, and I was, I think I was, it was hurting or something, whatever. I was like, I know I got a goal to, I got a goal to go. Uh, but I was saying to myself, I don't need to keep, keep fussing about what you fixing. Like, no way, like, oh, I'm going to this gym again, oh my God. It, I found out complaining about working out made the workout worse. Oh, this thing show is hard. God know. I found out coming to church, complaining about church, make coming to church hard. I come to find out complaining about people, talking about people makes it hard to be around people. And the reason why you don't like people is not because of the people, it's because of you. Yeah. It ain't people. You just like that 100 member marching band. There's, there's 99 people in step and you the one out of step talking about everybody got the wrong step. I need you to be comfortable. Point to yourself and say, hey, I feel somebody in my spirit. And they off. And it's me. Some of y'all didn't point to yourself. It's okay. I said, now, I know you got the spirit of God, but you, you, you got discernment about everybody except you. You discerning everybody except you. Isn't it something? This is good? Watch this. Why is Jesus talking to Peter? More than he's talking to Judas. Because watch this, Peter is the one that's giving him the most problems. Peter the one, walking on water, didn't make it all the way. 
Peter the one, <laughs> cussing by strange fire, lying. Peter the one setting uh, uh, lofty expectations but failed on all. Jesus, I, I'll, I'll even die with you. I'll go to prison for you. Where you at? Oh, he over there. Oh, that, oh, he way back over there. Is that the same one that just said? <laughs> but Jesus worked with Peter. Working with someone means building on their strengths while helping them through their weaknesses. I know, I know you got some strengths, so that's why I can't throw you away because we all have strengths and we all got weaknesses. And so when I say I'm working with you, I need you to work with me too. <laughs> don't, 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 just, don't just love me for my strengths. But I would rather show you my weaknesses first because my strengths, you're going to stay here. And if you see my weakness and you still here, oh, I got somebody. But if you can only love me when I'm strong, you won't be here long. Peter would be the one that would preach the first message on the day of Pentecost. So Jesus told Peter in Luke 22, the one that Jesus also called Satan. Satan, get behind me. You don't care about the things of God. You just care about what people care about. He said, I got a purpose. And you ain't going to stop me from fulfilling the purpose that's on my life. Anybody who tries to stop you from fulfilling the purpose on your life that God gave you is an enemy. I don't care how long you've been knowing. Jesus told Peter in Luke 22, 31 and 32, he says, Simon, Simon, wait a minute. Satan has asked to sift all of you as wheat. Verse 32, Peter, but I've prayed for you, Simon, that your faith may not fail. And when you have been converted or turned back, I need you to strengthen your brothers. Peter, I need you to go through what you need to go through so you can work out all of that paranoia. He's so paranoid, he's slicing people's ears off. Jesus said, man, I'm so sorry. I'm, I'm so sorry. He got that. You had your AirPod in that ear. I'm sorry. I'm gonna, let, me, let me grab that one for you so you can listen to both of them again. My boy, he just tripping because he paranoid. He, he, he think we about to fail. He, he think he about to be disappointed. That's why he acting out like that. You know, when people act out, it's really not about you. It's not because they paranoid. They, they just think, you know, when people try to, try to get rid of you, it's not really something that you've done. Have you been a good friend and you don't know why they just don't want to be your friend no more and they just and they just go off like you're like, you crazy no they're just a little paranoid because there's just something in them that's that just want to allow them to accept the loving companionship of a good friend amen oh hallelujah to god and you got to understand why why is it that you can only talk to this people group but you can't talk to that people group well, I can only relate to them. Uh, uh, what, really? You know, I, I, people trip me out. Well, you know, man, I can only talk to married people because I'm married now. What, were you single before you married? What, what, you, just forgot, you forgot how single life is? You forgot, you forgot the battles you fought and lost as a single person? Huh? Did you forget before kids came who you were? And did you forget the kid that came before you were married? Oh, you want to tell about, I, met, I, I dated the wrong joker, and I wish I wouldn't have dated, but you know, I got the most beautiful kid out of it, and he stayed in my spirit for a long time because I thought I loved him, but I really didn't love him. See, we ain't going to tell nobody that. Because we paranoid. Paranoid to think if we really share that with somebody, they won't see Jesus in us. But can I tell you something? Listen, you become more like Jesus the more you show people your scars. Lord, can I tell you something? I don't want to rock with nobody who won't have scars. And then I don't want to rock with nobody who act like they don't have scars. 
Oh, how soon we forget where we come from. And then we ask you, well, how did you come through? You're going to sit there, a highfalutin answer that Lord blessed me. Yeah, we know he blessed you, but tell me how you overcame it. Tell me how you had to fight the battle. Tell me where your mind went. Tell me how your discipline was applied. Tell me. And stop being so paranoid. Somebody going to know your business. Somebody knows your business. If your ex were to show up on Facebook, Hallelujah. But because you're so proficient in problems, see, see, tell somebody so we're paranoid. That's why we're studying Judas, because we're paranoid. And we're paranoid. You know, when you go to the certain stores, and, and you know, if a lot of stores have been receiving counterfeits, you know, what, what I've learned is, is, that, is that, you know, uh, uh, they have a real uh, a bill right there on the register so that they, they know what the real bill looks like so that the counterfeit is, oh, that ain't, that ain't even real. And, and so we, 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 we study counterfeits. Well, 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 let me study counterfeits. Well, 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 let, well let me study, uh, let, let, let me study the Muslim faith and let me, let me study the, the Hindu faith and, 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 and let me study burning sages and let me study talking to the ancestors and, and let me, let me study this. And let, let me go into the lost scrolls of the Dead Sea. Let, let me go into the Maccabees. You know that there's some lost books of the Bible. Look, why are you reading the lost books and you ain't even reading the one that we found? Read the, read the first 66 first before you go looking for the ones that's lost. All of these conspiracy theories, you follow these, 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 these sages on TikTok and Instagram and they read, you know you, I'm a Sagittarius, I'm a Scorpio, looking for your sign and looking up your astrology and looking at how the moon is coming. You know the eclipse going to be here tomorrow. And so you know, you know what that means about us because you know we, we, we connected to all this. You, you, you're proficient in all that stuff. And still fighting depression. Tell somebody I say paranoia. paranoia. Well, if, if I'm dealing with paranoia, then how in the world can I be like Peter? Because Jesus told Peter, when you converted, return to strengthen your brother. Well, see, if there's paranoia with me, there's ex ex excessive exaggerated untruth towards somebody or something, then there also must be what they call metanoia. Okay. Meta comes from metamorphosis, means to change. Noia, mind. Metanoia, change mind. Also where we get the word repentance. Repentance means to turn from one direction to another. God help me in here. And so Jesus told Peter, he said, I know you're suffering from paranoia, but when metanoia shows up, return and strengthen your brother. In other words, when you change how you look in that stuff, <laughs> metanoia is a transformative change of heart or mind through repentance that results, watch this, in a profound shift of perspective. That means if I experience metanoia, I can look at the same man, but in a different way. That don't mean you change, it means I changed. Are y'all with me? Y'all waiting for everybody else to change except you. You have to ask God forgiveness for rehearsing your past. You need to repent from your past. Not the past sin. The past visitations. You keep, memorial, you keep going to the gravestone of yesterday. And you built a memorial on the pain and failures of yesterday. 
and you rehearsed it so much. You know when they told the lie. You know what time the lie was. You know what day of the week it was. You know what they had on. You know what car they was driving. You know what color the couch you was sitting on when they told you this. You know you knew what was going on. I mean, you know it from A to B. You know what time they called you. You know what time the girl sent the text message. You know what time the picture came through. You knew all of that stuff. I mean, you knew how you felt and you rehearsed it. And that's why it, it, you're so proficient that when it comes up, you get so angry all over. I mean, you start crying and you relive it just like it's happening again because you are such a professional. You are holding that precious real estate in your mind with something that will not swing the pendulum forward. And you're rehearsing it. You're rehearsing it. You know how you're rehearsing it? Because you know a day can be going so good. And you come home and just look at them you black song. Oh, wait a minute. Uh, uh, wait a minute. I was just making the macaroni and cheese for dinner. I just, I, I didn't even say nothing. Because, watch this. <laughs> because that real estate is being held. <laughs> you, you can't control when a thought pops in. And so, watch this. When a paranoid thought meets an off-perceived opportunity, anger will be expressed. I mean, y'all done went to counseling, they've been forgiven and forgotten and forgiven and all that kind of stuff. And next thing you know, between the macaroni and cheese and the stove, you black, oh, wait. Because I left therapy and I really wasn't healed. I just left there on pins and needles. Watch this. Hoping that you won't do what you did before. Well, why can't you hope for me to be what you expect and live out that hope? Same thing. You be, oh, Lord. I got to close, y'all. Anybody ever been suspicious of a person? Anybody suspicious of people right now? Tell the truth. Can, can I see those hands again? Put your hand down. You ain't too old. You ain't old enough to be suspicious. Rhetorical question. Why are you so suspicious? It's because of what they did, Bishop. It's what they did to me. That's why. If they wouldn't have did that, I wouldn't be like I am. If Jerome wouldn't have did what he did, I wouldn't be like I am now. That Jerome or giraffe, look at somebody, he, 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 he just get on my nerves. Nobody here named Jerome, honey. If you are, I'm sorry. I'm not talking about you, Jerome. Yeah. I'm going to just use planets. If, uh, you know what, a star is, if Orion just would have just, if Orion would have just, if Orion just would have been the person that Orion told me he was going to be when we met on Tinder, You suspicious. You went in a business partnership and they they took half of what they and the business failed you. So you suspicious about going into Well, let me tell you where the real suspicion come from. They told you they weren't gonna do it again. And they did it. You know I love you. You know I love you. This ain't just dealing with marriage. I'm just I'm just I'm just you know I love. You know I ain't gonna never do that again. I ain't gonna never tell you no other. You know I'm gonna be a good friend. You know I ain't gonna tell. I ain't gonna tell nobody what you told. I ain't gonna do that no more. And they did it. And guess what happened? These trifling jokers. I know it, it, they, everybody trifling now. Everybody trifling. And so guess what you do? You call Seegers. And you build fences. Y'all know the old chain link fence? We got one back here. You know, most of them you see them at baseball fields and stuff like that. You know, you can reach your hand through there, but you can't go through there. So this is why we only want people for their hands, but we never get to know them for their heart. And when they withdraw their hand, we think that's the totality of the individual, never getting to know their heart. But if I am going to get to know your heart, 
Come here, Tony. I can't talk to you through the fence. I have to let you come in close proximity and get to know my brother. And watch this. See how my arm is? See how his arm is? We both open up our heart to each other. That's why when we embrace each other, it is a state of vulnerability. Lord, he has to be vulnerable to me. I have to be vulnerable to him. But he can never get to know me. Fold your arms, Tony. Never get to know me being closed in. Body language says a lot. Know when you talk, notice when you talk to people, they like this? That's defense. Or watch this, they can't, they can't talk to you like this, they gotta, that's saying, I, I don't, I like you, but I don't want nobody close to me. Because you might do what they did. I know you save. I know you're the deacon in the church. But you're still a man. How, how do, so suspicion, thank you, Tony. Well, no, give me, stay right So if I'm suspicious of Tony, the root of suspicion does not lie within him. The root of suspicion lies within me. Because watch this, what he's doing is only giving me information. It's how I apply it that paints the picture. Thank you, Tony. We're studying Judas so much. The reason why we're so suspicious is because Judas is like a pattern. Here I go again. Here go another one. Uh -huh, they're going to they do just like them. Gonna, we, we, we'll be 21 years old in October. All right? You know the first thing I had to learn to do? Stop talking about people who leave. I don't want to know about them. That's why I, I, I couldn't understand for a long time is, how, how you keep following people who disloyal? And you won't know about their life, but they don't want to know nothing about you. What does that say about you? Well, you know, I'm ten toes down kind of girl. Ten toes down kind of guy. We, we, we in it like this. Mm, really? And that's what's driving your suspicion. Yeah. Yeah. Lord have yeah. mercy. Judas <sighs> should never be viewed as a pattern of study. Do you know what I don't think Judas was? A part of the plan. That's it. A part of the plan. That's why when the time came, you know what he did? Come here, Michael. Come here, hurry up. You know what he did? Lord have mercy. He came up, Judas, Judas came to Jesus. He ain't pouring him off in the distance. He said, hey, man, how you doing? Kissed him. Do you know how close you got to be to kiss somebody? Gotta be real close, up in the face. And Jesus allowed it because he already knew his purpose. I don't have to study you when I know what you are. That's why he spent so much time, thank you, buddy, with, G, with, with Peter because Peter didn't understand who he was. So if there's anybody I need to spend time with is Peter. Judas, you just a part of the plan. I need to show Peter that he can do what I can do. I need to tell Peter, greater works shall you do than these. Because I go to, I need to tell Peter, hallelujah, flesh and blood has not, but my father, which is, so when he stands up on the day of Pentecost, all of this stuff. Now if I spend my time watching Judas, what kind of mess would Peter have in Acts 2? Because I was called to be a pattern for Peter, not to watch the pattern of Judas. 
You're called to be a woman of God, not a woman of suspicion. You're called to be a man of God, not a man of suspicion. You watching everybody, studying everybody, and you're missing out on the joy that's available to you. Hallelujah. That's why I heard Pastor Shree when she was standing there telling the testimony about when she fainted. She said, I can praise God by myself. Now, I used to say that, but you know what? That, what does that really mean? You know what? <laughs> I'm not really watching what you do or what you don't do. I just love the Lord, and I'm called to be an example for him. So that means I can't get mad if you don't stand up and worship God. I'm just called to be an exemplar of God's worship. And, and, and watch this. And the more I study worship, the more authentic my worship becomes. And watch this. And then maybe other people begin to do what I do because I love God. Instead of being angry at what you don't do, let me fall in love with what I'm supposed to do. And the more I do what I'm called to do, the more joy I have. Watch this. And then if Judas just so happened to show up, I realize you just a part of the plan. I ain't got to pray about you. I ain't got to fast about you. I ain't got to turn my plate down about you. I ain't got to sow a seed about you. I don't have to pray you out the door. You just a part of the plan because the reality, you ain't never stop nothing and you won't. So stop studying. And I'm not denying your experience. But I don't want you to have a PhD in failure and a pre-K education in faith. Why are you popping off so quick? Why are you so defensive? Nobody can correct you. And you snapping and jerking necks and telling me you don't know who this is. We ain't in the hood. You might have been born there and raised there, but you don't want to let it in you. Lord, have mercy. <laughs> I was raised in a, in a house in Grimes and that didn't belong to me. And in Simpson, it didn't belong to me. And I remember the last time I went there, I, I, I put an old frosted flake Tony the Tiger sticker on my bedroom door. And this was years later. My mom was still alive. And I went back and that sticker was still faded on the door. And you know what the Lord, and I, I, I don't know, the Lord told me, this thought just hit me in the head. It says, you ain't that kid no more. So because I was raised in a place, doesn't mean I have to become the place. Right. Don't believe me? Moses was raised as an Egyptian. But he delivered the people as a Hebrew. Lord. Yes, sir. I'm telling you. Metanoia is a, is a changing of my mind. If I change my mind, I change how I see you. And I realize how I see you don't start with you. It starts with me. So if I bring pain to my vision, I don't care how sweet you are, you're going to hurt me. If I bring disloyalty to the table, I don't care how loyal you are, I'm looking for something. Uh-oh, you text me back two minutes later. Uh, I knew it. I knew it. She said she's going to be here at 10 o'clock. She'll be here at 10.05. I knew it. I knew something. Was, I'm just watching. I'm see if it's going to get later and later. Wait a minute. Concentrating on the wrong stuff. I'm closing, y'all. 